In this tutorial I want to show you how to animate this character here in sync with the music using BeatEdit Speedwigger. We use patterns to do this and if you don't know about BeatEdit patterns yet, please watch this. No matter if you do character animation or not, beat patterns really can be used for all kinds of things and make your workflow so much easier and are very powerful. So this character was brought to life by Eric Lassen from Woodcheck Creative for the Beat Edit promo video and he rigged this character with the help of a few other tools. So Limber was used to create the arms and legs and joysticks and sliders to create these controllers here that allow you to animate the character much easier. Limber and joysticks and sliders are no Mama World tools so I'm not involved in their development but they are also available at Ascripts and I highly recommend them. Of course, the workflow we show here also works with characters that are rigged with other tools, like Rubberhose or Duik, for example. We start here with the already rigged character, so if you want to know more about that, look for tutorials about limber and joysticks and sliders. The key thing you need to understand for now is just that once a character is rigged, instead of keyframing all the different parts of the body directly, all you need to do is to keyframe just those joysticks and sliders here at the top, and then the puppet performs certain moves that are connected to those joysticks and sliders. I have already keyframed all controllers except the right arm. And as you can see, the character already moves nicely, but the right arm is still not moving at all. So let's start playing with this rig to understand what's happening when we move this joystick around here. So if we move the joystick here to the left, you can see the arm moves here on this left drum pad. And if we move it to the right, it moves here to this right drum pad and kicks this drum pad. And there's a lot of this, uh, things connected to this, so even like the drum pad starts wiggling after it's hit and so on, all of this is automated with joysticks and sliders and with some custom expressions. And this makes this rig a bit slow, you can see also if I move this here down, it hits this drum pad here. You can also raise this here up and now the drummer raises his arm too. This is great because it's very automated and all of the secondary actions are connected to this, but at the same time it's very slow as you can see. So if you would now have to animate this joystick here manually, it would really be a very tedious, very slow work because you have to render it very often and always preview and see whether the timing is right. And so this is much faster if you do this with Beat Edit, where you have a nice interactive preview of how your layers animate, no matter how complex your actual rigs are. So what we can do is we can say, okay, we just want the simple position peak. And now let's say we want to start with the drummer always just kicking in sync with the beat downwards here on, on this drum. So like moving the controller downwards. So we make sure the controller is reset properly to zero, zero, because the beat wiggle always acts on top of the existing value. And then we select this and we say we want to move downwards, so this means 0 in x direction and 150 downwards just because the distance from here to the end of the controller, this is always 150 for this particular controller. And I can see a preview. So it kicks downwards here on each beat and we just select the position and apply. And now we've got our keyframes here and let's take a look at how this is looking like. So I skipped ahead in time now to finish the RAM preview and as you can see now our controller is moving downwards here in a nice pattern and the hand animates accordingly. This is not yet very spectacular so let's create a bit more complex move now. So let's say on every four speed we don't want the controller to go downwards but to the left such that it kicks this drum here. Now you could do this with several rounds of beat wiggling. You, can, you know that you can apply a second one on top of the first. But then if so far it is going downwards on each beat and now on top of that we also move it to the left on every fourth one, then it will move in a diagonal way both to the left and downwards to combine those two movements. And this is not exactly what we want. So what we do instead is that we undo the previous beat wiggle to have no keyframes at all. And now we apply a new one with the help of a pattern. And patterns are just explained best by seeing what's going on. I click here on this plus symbol to create more than one value and now beat edit cycles through those values one by one. So I can say I always want to have the same move of 0, 150, 0, 150. 0, 150 for all of them and now it's performing the same move downwards as before and now I can say well on this one here I want to have it differently here I want to go minus 150 in x direction and not at all in y direction and now we have this down 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 left down 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 left down 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 this nice pattern and so it's very easy to create complex multi-step moves by just 
increasing number the number of values you have here and cycling through them. Let's apply this to our right arm joystick here and see how this is looking like. So now you can see that the arm moves exactly in this pattern and that also here the controller moves in this pattern that we created with speed edit. Now let's say we want to create a little bit more variation and so let's say here we've got this marker second part and up to here we want everything to stay as it is but from this point here on we want a bit more chaos. So what I'm going to do is delete all those keyframes after this one and now let's say at this point we want to really at each beat randomly go left, right, up, down in a chaotic way. So we have here downwards and then we say next we go up and then here we go left and then here we say 150 and zero. Now we've got our four extremes. Downwards, upwards, left and right. And if we play it like this, it goes in a very regular fashion. Yeah, Left, right, down, up, left, right, down, up. Always the same. And if you say we want those four values but in a random order, then you can enable this R here. If we click this and play back, you can see that the blue line disappears because now it's not going in a linear order, but it's purely random now instead. Now we want this random chaos movement to start only here. So we set the beginning of our work area to this point because keyframes will always only be generated inside the work area. And then also make sure that the position that we start at here uh, is actually the center because currently you can see the position is here. And so it would from this position move left, right, up, down in a chaotic way. So we move in here and make sure that at the beginning of our work area, we are back at zero, zero. Okay, now with the property selected, we apply our beat wiggle and now let's take a look at the second part. So as you can see, both the hand and also the controller are moving in a pretty random fashion now. Okay, so that's how the beat wiggle is working with these patterns of more than one value. Some last tips, if you use the randomize option and you want one value to occur way more often than the other ones, what you can do is just insert this one value many times. So remember that you can have as many values as you want. And if you have like 10 values and nine of them are identical and only one is different, then in nine out of 10 cases, the so one value will be chosen since it's there nine times. Also note that when you use a random option, each time you apply the beat wiggle, you get a different random choice. So if you're not happy with the created keyframes, you can simply undo and apply again to get a different random choice. Finally, notice that these plus symbols are here not only for the amount, but really for all these properties. So even for the easing, you can say, I want to cycle through different easing variants and create an easing variant pattern, essentially. So as you can see, the beat wiggle is very powerful, but still also very easy and intuitive to use. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun experimenting with it. And if you create something cool, please post it with hashtag madewithmamoworldbeatedit such that we can share your work also on our social channels.